Hey crew, we're going to be making some sheet metal letters today. And in order to do that, we need to learn a little bit about some sheet metal tools. So we're going to be starting a new file. It's a sheet metal part file, but it's very, very similar to just a regular part file, except they add this one tab here. So that gives us these new tools that deal with sheet metal work. And then hopefully we can design some kind of letter like this. So with that, let's get started on how sheet metal files work. So what I'm going to do is just start a new file, sheet metal inches IPT. And like most files, you got to start with a sketch. So I'll start with a sketch. And in this demo, I'm just going to make a little box and do some quick explanation of tools. So let's say I was making a box. Maybe it's three by three, enter finish sketch and instead of extruding we use something called a face tool here in sheet metal so I'm gonna click on that face tool because it's my only one it's gonna automatically find it and the direction part really doesn't matter so I hit OK and there's our first chunk of material on the screen from here we use a lot of what's called flange tools or the flange tool so I'm gonna click on that and by what you do is you click on an edge and it auto selects it the whole way and it's trying to add material for you because in sheet metal you're typically bending and you know adding material to your shapes the big thing here is to note that that bend point can be adjusted with this bend position or these bend position options and that's a big deal when we get into our letters and how we want things to overlap or underlap I guess if you want to call it that whether the it goes inside or outside of the other material um, we can also adjust the length of this by changing that box there and, and just how it's measuring that as well if you look closely at those symbols. And then one other thing is we can adjust whether this bend is the full width of the edge. Right there, that's edge selected. Or if I want to set a specific width. Try two. Remember it's a three inch side, so there's two or if I want to do an offset from each end and then this is what's nice I can do different offsets on each end depending on what my shapes are and then the last one is a from and to and that one I probably don't use quite as much but if you had a, some kind of feature in one spot and obviously on the other end you could select those two to control that as well so for here simple edge I'll stick with that hit OK and it and, adds my material or adds my flange with a bend in the quarter automatically and right away now I can go to this tool up here it says create flat pattern and I can see that this part will unfold and that's what it would look like um, when I'm laying it out to cut it out of a piece of sheet metal and that's really I think the magic that this tool lets you go back to folded part it lets us design in 3d the way we're picturing something in our head but yet it's going to give us those flat patterns so we can make them easily. All right, so that's the flange tool. I'm um, use that one a lot. You can do it. So, sorry, wrong button. You can do flanges on flanges. You know, I can go this way now and head back up. Um, 1.5. I can also control the angle, 45. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. Just where that bend's happening. Hit OK. Check my flat pattern. Still working. Awesome. Um, so yeah, we flange tools work in that manner. Okay, another tool we can use is the bend tool. Um, and what we'd use that for is let's say we have a flange that's got a unique shape and we just don't want it all rectangular like. So I'm going to maybe do a sketch on this surface. I'll draw my unique shaped uh, flange where I need this to end up. It'd be kind of a 45-ish. So kind of some chamfered edges like bring that back finish sketch we'll make a face out of that I'm gonna make sure that's going out the other direction so it's not inside on the metal hit OK and let's try this bend tool now and usually what we have to do is just click on two edges we would like to join up and there we go and you can see the computer is generating what that bend would maybe look like and not as many options now. Usually just uh, take what you get and hit OK. And there we are. 
And Inventor is going to add these notches here. These are relief cuts so that when you're bending stuff, it doesn't necessarily tear out where you don't want it. This little fan's here and what we probably do around here because we do a lot of hand sheet metal work. But if things were getting all laser cut and stamped out, uh, these would be very important features on this part. Um, and if we get them, don't worry about them. I'm more looking at the overall picture if we're making the general shapes we want. You can also create cuts on parts. So if you did do a sketch here, you know, and I could create a unique shape that I need notched or something. Let me finish that off just to make sure it's going to work here. Finish. And then we can use a cut tool, and it's like extrude. Right? It highlights. It's going to remove. Hit OK. And all of this comes back. Go to the flat pattern. And you can see that it's all being reflected and updated in this pattern as we go. And the other thing I was going to show would be a contour flange. So sometimes um, you'll see that in the letters we got to fill in a gap. Um, and in the letter what we have to do is put a work plane kind of in the middle of an area. So I might do a plane and click one side here. Click the opposite side. And then I can sketch on this plane. And let's say I want some part that has a shape kind of somewhat resembling our first uh, face and flanges that I made. Finish sketch. Okay, once I have that sketch, then I'm going to go up and get that contour flange right there. And the big thing on this is often, when I'm using contour flange, it's often because I'm doing filler pieces. Um, so we're going to set this to a new solid in this example. And then sure enough, it lights up. And like extrude, you can pick a lot of options, whether you want it centered, left, right. And of course, we wanted this one centered. And I could pick a width, but that too looks pretty good at the moment. And except those are all just really common ways to make sheet metal features. Let's see what we can do when it comes to making some letters.